Hi, guys. Uh, Dot13 is out. Um, if your show is running, stick with what you got. If you have issues, take a look at Dot13. A lot of these fixes are for one-off cases to make sure people's shows are running. Let's take a quick look. Not a lot of stuff to demo here. Lots of behind-the-scenes bug fixes. Um, Dan has been busy working on a lot of these things here for us. Um, starting off from the bottom, fix FPP Connect, always uploading media. So when you did FPP Connect, and normally it would scan the sequence to determine whether or not it needs to upload it again, but it was always sending the media every time. So he put in some more conditions there to validate that the media was there and then not have to resend it again. So that will speed up your uploads. Um, make sure MP4 extensions are added when you export the videos. And that's, I think that's more of a Mac issue, but it's probably valid for both. And that would be under file uh, export house preview video, I'm assuming. Um, FP is fixed some F IPv6 issues. We're seeing lots of networking. He's got lots of creative networks out there this year with the mesh networks and such. So uh, we're trying to catch those every time. Um, FPP Connect only upload active models. This is sort of a, a special case for those folks using FPP models, pixel model, pixel model overlays. Um, so if you have a model that's not set to active, it won't bother sending it. So I'll just show you what we're talking about. If you have a model like this and you go down to string properties, nope, appearance, appearance. If you mark it as inactive, notice you'll get the angle brackets. Uh, that means it's inactive, and it's saying don't bother sending those sorts of things up to FPP. Uh, Dan's got a fix for a crash at startups if you take too long to select a show folder. That's an interesting one. Um, for various exceptions, make sure XLite actually crashes and generates a crash dump. So we're trying to eliminate those silently closing XLites where we don't know what happened. Um, an update to the lower render script. I think I either uploaded this version or prior version. We noticed that it wasn't working properly. The times weren't recorded properly on the Mac and uh, well, not Windows oper operating system. So slight tweak on that one for those people using that. Um, Scott removed WLED ch uh, checking for, um, that'd be universe sizes and adding DDP and RGBW checks. Um, Jason, up update from base folder, not handling multicast controllers. I'm assuming that's the, uh, if you have, if you have obviously base show folders and such, and you say update, it wasn't handling that properly. Um, filter label on VU meter didn't handle lists. So I'm not sure too many people use this, but let's throw this in. And if I throw a VU meter just on a, any anything here, you could say I want a timing event um, color, for example. Assuming I got a B track, one, two, three, four, I don't have it there. But if you go here, Let's see if we can get the. Let's see if I can get the the uh, tooltip to show up again. Click, come on, tooltip. Where are you? All right. I think it said to do one comma two, or is it semicolon three? One of those. How do we get the tooltip to show up, guys? It was there for a second. Maybe I got to click over here. And click back here. There we go. Only trigger on timing events which contain this token in their text. Blank matches all. Multiple tokens can be uh, semicolon separated. There you go. So if you want to have it change colors on one and three of a beak track, so I'm just going to put it, um, there you go, right click, add timing track, metronome with tags, click OK, um, just make it space out. 5,000 is fine. So you get one, two, three, four. So now this would trigger change colors on one and three. Prior to this, um, this feature didn't work. So now the filter does work. Something simple as that. Um, somebody found an edge case, uh, maybe not so much of an edge case, but the aspect ratio for videos that were larger than I think roughly 1K, 2K size. So think of those 4K videos and you had a uh, fixed aspect ratio. It was not honoring that. It was chopping them off. So we found that, that was, uh, Dan did that. Um, bunch of issues on the Linux related to the file dialog, not returning the proper path. 
Scott did that. Scott actually did a lot of work on the Linux. There's some Linux guys that were being very helpful and passing information on to Scott. And he was able to correct a number of issues with Linux. Those guys were sort of stuck back in the past and they couldn't roll forward until these changes were in place. So thank you to Scott. Um, more issues with FPP Connect. We're having lots of interesting finds with FPP Connect, not finding all of the remotes or not all the IPs. So we're continuing to trace down that. And similar to the next one here, some host named IP issues. Um, there was some crashing or some, um, um, uh, yeah, on the Mac, it was giving errors that certain libraries weren't bound and such. So Dan's added more libraries there. Um, Martin had to re-add some code um, back to the EES pixel sticks because it would crash on a, uh, on an empty JSON file. So that should be working for those folks. Um, I found a few things through the crash logs that were being generated. Um, null pointer exceptions. So cases where they would silently uh, issue a crash uh, upload. Um, fix that. Um, we found a case where Twinkly uh, would crash if the device was offline. So we handled that condition. And Charlie added a few items here for shortcuts on timings and uh, um, being able to right-click subdivide it. Also added a confirmation so that if you decide to delete a viewpoint, so if I go to layout, right-click, um, you'd have to save a current viewpoint, say test, click OK. And then if I come right click, I'm assuming if I say delete it, it should give me a prompt. There you go. Are you sure you want to delete the 2D viewpoint test? This action cannot be undone. Say yes. So we've added that so you don't inadvertently delete something because you know the, the buttons are so close together. Menu choices are so close together. So we've done that. Dan has just grouped a little bit of things as his catalog of controllers gets larger. Um, I think I can show it here. I think he, what he's saying is you have K8, and then he's bundled all the K8s in here so that you can get them all together as opposed to putting them all in this big list here. I'm guessing that's what he's done. And um, uh, more of a developer thing, Scott has added JSON printing to a, a a companion app, um, FC underscore info, and that's in there. Um, Charlie added something about uh, resizing effects when clicking on them. So now if you are hovering over an effect, um, you're less likely to resize it unless it gets to be very, very annoying that you're like clicking on it and all of a sudden you just click in it and you go like this just a little bit and it moves it. So he's added a slight delay in there before it will trigger the movement. So that's it, mostly bug fixes. If you hit a show-stopping bug that's, that's got you um, stuck, go, go ahead and dot 13. But otherwise, I think everybody should be fine with or without this right now. Um, there's a couple things in here that are hidden, like this, uh, like this uh, fix aspect ratio. So even though you think your sequences are all good because they are rendering and they're saving and everything else, you may be being bit by some of these bugs. So just because it's up and running doesn't mean you're getting the perfect show for your display. So go ahead and uh, update if you'd like. Um, and if something doesn't work for you, you can always roll back on the Windows side of things. A little trickier on the Mac side of things, so be care be cautious on that. And uh, yeah, hope your show is all going well. Zoom room's not too busy, but please, uh, if you are in the Zoom room, patience is key. Thank you uh, for listening, and be sure to like and subscribe. And hope your shows are all going well. Have a great day. Bye now.